There is a principle in Matthew 6.33 that's more powerful than even the power of prayer. When you seek first the kingdom of God, God begins to ask you the question, what do you want? Many of us, we are desperate. Our problems made us desperate and we manipulate God's presence. We manipulate the Holy Spirit and we use the Holy Spirit as a means to get a miracle instead of using a miracle as a means to get to know the Holy Spirit. We are like Israel saying, God get me out of Egypt. In reality, they didn't really want God. They just wanted freedom and God was a means to get that freedom. But Moses used the exodus from Egypt as a means to know God. Because when God took too long on the mountain, Israel worshipped the cow. But when God too long, took too long on the mountain, Moses waited on God. Because to Moses, God was not a means to a goal. God was the goal. Something happens when you make intimacy with the Holy Spirit, your number one goal. It numbs your desperation. It doesn't remove the problem, it just makes your problem not the most important thing in your life. Yes, you're struggling with finances. Yes, maybe there is a pain in your body. But you understand that God is bigger than the problem. Because once you die and you'll be six feet under, that problem will not exist. God's voice is more important than my issue and God, what God wants me to do that is to reach to the lost is more important than something I have in my body. That is more important and when I am busy doing these three things, God says, what do you want? Because intimacy with the Holy Spirit kills your desperation. Desperation is dangerous. I know people say get desperate for your miracle. Personally, I believe for the growing mature Christians that is dangerous. Because when you're desperate for your miracle, you become impatient. And when you become impatient, you always produce Ishmael. When you're desperate for your miracle, you cannot differentiate between God's supply and Satan's bait. When you're desperate for your miracle, God is always a means to a goal. And when you get the goal, God left, get left behind. But when you are satisfied in God, in spite of your problem, God now takes interest in your problem. God takes interest in your dream. God takes interest in your desires. God is the one that says, let's make your dreams come to pass. You say, Lord, I give up a long time ago. God says, I know, but I take interest in that. Why? Because these dreams now are not going to come out of desperation. They'll come out of your satisfaction in the presence of God.